The Nigerian Defense Academy has not only turned out thousands of world-class military officers, but also evolved to become a global reference point and a benchmark to many countries aspiring to maintain a military capable of defending its integrity since its establishment. The 28th Commandant of the Nigeria Defense Academy, Major General Adeni Oyebade, is already making giant strides in expanding the frontiers of development in the institution. The only way you can really assess the outcome of what you do here is by the quality of our officers and, and, and of, our, of our officers when they go on operations. And Liberia, Sierra Leone, Sudan, Angola, uh, Democratic, Democratic Republic of Congo, and of course, in country, you know, we have demonstrated the capacity. And I dare say, without um, uh, any uh, misconception whatsoever, the Nigerian Armed Forces has remained one of the strongest institutions in land that has kept the peace in this country. And of course, as NDA, we are proud that we are the factory that has uh, produced these uh, officers and now women of our four armed forces. The, the curriculum of the institution, that's the Defense Academy, uh, is constantly and regularly interrogated. Uh, we, don't, we, we, not ju we don't just train our, our young men and women, our cadets, in conventional warfare, because we have since realized and recognized over the last uh, 20, 30 years plus that uh, the battle of the future, which is now, is going to be more of you know, um, intrastate you know, conflicts of which the military must be fully prepared. Uh, it has been challenging you know, to, 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 you know, to transform from a solely conventional you know, uh, army fighting interstate wars to fighting you know, um, intrastate conflicts like we have seen. The, uh, the insurgency, the, the spate of crime which has gone haywire. And uh, we have seen also that uh, the Nigerian Defense Academy over time has uh, incorporated uh, internal security operations, you know, training modules into the training of our cadets. Um, we constantly interrogate how to bring in fresh ideas, learning, taking from the lessons of our operations in the field and to bring to bear in our training. So that these cadets, once they leave here, they have a very good idea of the kind of conflict they're likely to face, you know, because it's possible when they leave here, they may not have the luxury of going for any other course, depending on the exigency of duty. They may be launched immediately, as it happened in the, during the Nigerian Civil War. Some of them left the academy, and they were strictly, went straight into war. So recognizing that, we have um, introduced several you know, forms of um, ICT in our training. We do simulation exercises. Uh, we, 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 we draw from lessons from the field. We also upgrade our equipment you know, with which we train our, our cadets. Okay? We also let them know that the fighting, the, 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 the battlefield that we face today is not a battlefield of 40, 50, 60 years ago. And in that light, they are constantly being trained, and to that extent, the Nigerian Defense Academy has done a lot. And um, we also recognize the importance of law of armed conflicts, which we train our cadets to understand that look, fighting is just one thing. There are rules and regulations. Even as I speak now, we have some of our cadets in Italy, uh, where they are participating in the international competition on law of armed conflict. We do that every year, and this is further to expose our you know cadets. To, uh, to, to, to you know, interface with other academies and the cadets, and also to learn new things. And when they do come back, we interrogate what they have learned and, and try to extract those good things we think is necessary for our training. The Nigerian Defense Academy stands shoulder to shoulder with other military academies in the world. The Commandant Nigeria Defense Academy also works with a capable lieutenant. It is my duty to ensure that our training is geared towards achieving the right needs, both in academic and military training, to ensure that we bring out the best uh, products for the three services. We have currently introduced 
the counter-terrorism, counter-insurgency operations training. At the same time, we have the laws of armed conflict. Specifically, we have tried as, in as much as possible to empower the instructors and the lecturers, um, giving them the proper training that is required uh, for that training and at the same time uh, ensuring that the, the lecture now is interactive. Hmm? No more uh, a lecturer standing in front of uh, 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 cadets, you know, and giving them precise later on, but let the cadets uh, be involved in the lectures, uh, coming out to present, and ensuring that at all times, you know, they are involved in a way, so that at least uh, we're bringing out modernization into the training. Professor Azwike Sony Wanko oversees academic activities in the academy. What distinguishes NDA as a world-class university, certainly in Nigeria, is down to its people. Very often people look at fixtures, systems, and superstructures. But these things do not make a university. Human capital or intellectual capital does. So I think that the greatest asset of NDA should be its own people. A bunch of dedicated men and women who are professionals to the core, who are dedicatedly doing their job and expanding boundaries and frontiers of knowledge. So for me, this actually is the greatest asset of NDA. But in addition to that also, the Academy over the past 35 years of uh, having a degree awarding powers has also invested in some basic infrastructure that enables teaching, research, and improving the environment of learning. So all of these put together makes NDA to have the foundation to be a category one university in the global committee of university system, certainly in Nigeria. The unique selling point USP for NDA postgraduate school, some people will very easily tell you that it's nestled in its own space. It's the only postgraduate business school that has a campus of its own almost like an autonomous entity, but it's not autonomous anywhere. And it's unique in Nigeria. And this is where, for example, we applaud previous commandants who have worked assiduously to bring the PG school to where it is now. And current commandant, uh, Major General Adenia Yebade, who has committed just about everything to ensure that our PG school remains number one in Nigeria. At this point in time, I do not think there's any other postgraduate school in Nigeria that equals in the APG school. The cadets are exposed to various kinds of comprehensive military training, simulations, cutting across the Army, Navy, and the Air Force. Academic and military training go hand in hand with discipline. Uh, in modern cadets to be officers, we basically look at three key things closely related, which are critical to achieving the mandate of the college. First is leadership development, because cadets are meant to be leaders commission. They are meant to command men into combat. So that leadership attribute is absolutely key and will ensure that before commission they have acquired enough leadership skills to be able to lead troops into combat. Second is character development. Again also tied to leadership. It will ensure that cadets are trained on all facets of character development. Moral in terms of integrity, Honor, professional in terms of being able to execute assigned tasks successfully, even social, being able to live honorably both in public and civil life, and also in terms of civic, being able to have emotional intelligence, empathy, interpersonal skills. 
Now these are the foundations of officer SCADA. Once the cadets are sufficiently trained in this key attribute, then their ability to function is not in doubt, and that is all. Now in terms of professional training, who grade them through several range of uh, key areas, starting from the physical fitness, which will achieve through normal training endurance, swimming and other. And then subjecting them to various military subjects in order to develop their professional competence. Areas like tactics, map reading, communication, geopolitics and all that. So when you join all these areas together, you find out that the cadets are better forced into ultimately being elite. First, to we'll ensure that the cadets are in tune with all spectrum basic knowledge, of course, of all spectrum of activities you need to be able to function both in conventional warfare and asymmetric warfare. Now, conventional warfare in the sense that despite the changes in the character and nature of warfare with more issues of uh, irregular threats, we still believe that cadets need to understand first those frameworks that you need to conduct conventional warfare. After that, and also based on our local situation at home, we are beginning to veer into areas of irregular warfare, counter-terrorism, hybrid operation, so that the knowledge cadets gain in these areas, they can better apply it on the ground, seeing the challenges we have in, this, uh, in the Northeast. In other words, with this basic knowledge, the cadets are better able with little or no further training to be able to function in defense of the command. So we now have a modus on counterterrorism, which seeks to expose the cadets to the basic principles and tools you can apply in combat of this nature. Also, hybrid operations, in the sense that these days, you find out that uh, you have what you call a three block warfare. Three block warfare in the sense that you'll be expected to face high intensity conventional conflict, stabilization operation, internal security, low intensity conflict in one single theater. Specifically, the academy is also at an advanced stage of building a counterterrorism village. The idea of the counterterrorism village is for the students to have a hands on approach on how things can unfold so that in real life they will be able to lean back on these experiences they have gotten to be able to function adequately. Cadet daily activities are guided by Cadet Brigade Commander. They have their monster parade, that is the morning check-in. After that they go for first period. From the first period they go for their breakfast from where they proceed to the academic branch or the military branch for their training. After that of course they have their lunch then they have a light rest, go for evening games. Then they have dinner. After dinner, they are not left on their own, they still go for prep. Then they have night checking and of course bed check at night. However, in between, during, they have breaks that they can proceed. End of term breaks, weekends too, they can also go on Liberty Pass. So the routine is designed such that it keeps them busy and makes them responsible. In view of the need to ensure optimal performance is among the staff of the institution, whilst maintaining high quality in both academic and military training, the Commandant, Nigeria Defense Academy, Major General Adeni Oyebade, has demonstrated unflinching commitment to staff motivation. Here, I'm the chief trainer, and my cadets will see me as somebody they want to emulate. They must see and each of my officers they interact on a daily basis as people they want to be like. Because those are the closest people they see of what they want to be. And if they don't have that inspiration, if they don't have that commitment, that excitement that I want to be like this person, then we are feeling our duty. I 
I think um, every leader, every leader has a responsibility to recognize that um, you must learn to motivate the people that you lead. And what are those key things? Constant training. I, I, I may be able to say, uh, under my leadership, since I took over, I was privileged to be appointed by the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tiwa Boratai, to lead this institution. We have sent so many, so many, uncountable number of military and civilian staff on high level of training at home and abroad. So, uh, over the last one year, we have renovated several dilapidated accommodation, upgraded it. We have also uh, built quite a number. As a result of the remarkable successes recorded so far, the cadets have remained in high spirits. Recently, in Nigerian Defense Academy, our training facilities, infrastructure and concept review have greatly improved the overall training standard in all ramifications. We are now well equipped to face any form of contemporary challenges, both locally and internationally. Cadets feeding now is of standard and everybody's enjoying it. Then, secondly, he has introduced the IHL, which is the uh, International Humanitarian Law, into our curriculum. It is worthy of note that cadets that pass through the Nigerian Defense Academy has memorable moment. Yeah. Wow! <laughs> There's a place they call Bomber Tunnel. Uh, it's a tunnel really that connects two cadets lines and uh, each time your seniors want to scare the hell out of you, they ask to pass through the tunnel and it's so tight. I won't be telling you on the big side, you guys talking there, my God, you hate yourself. <laughs> but um, they are funny moments, but then it wasn't funny then. Yes. But um, once you leave, you go back, you just laugh about it. And uh, here we are today. To